Hello everyone, happy Monday. In this video, we're going to be solving a non-standard equation, partially exponential and partially polynomial or linear. We have the product of x and 5 to the power x, and that's equal to 50. And we're going to be solving for x values. We're going to look at a couple different things, a graph, a table, and also a special type of function. So let's get started. First of all, I have an expression, and definitely you're allowed to guess at this point, but you also need to uh, prove that there are either no other solutions or if there are any other solutions, make an attempt to find them. Anyways, uh, my attempt would be at converting 5 to Euler's number. Obviously, when you have a product like this, you want to have e at the base. e is Euler's number, which is about 2.7, right? And that's actually the base for the natural logarithm. So we want to turn this 5 into e. How can you do that? You can use a well-known identity, which is e to the power ln something. Let's just call that a is equal to a. So e to the power ln anything is anything. Okay. So we can basically say then that e to the power ln 5 is equal to 5. Let's go ahead and replace the 5 with that in our equation. See what happens. x times 5 to the power x, which will be replaced with e to the power ln 5. And then to the power x equals 50. Now, the rules of exponents say we're supposed to multiply these exponents. So it's going to look like this. x times e to the power x ln 5. And that's equal to 50. So we were able to change the base to e, which is nice. But then we need to do something else. And I'll tell you in a little bit why that's the case. We're going to multiply both sides by something. Now, if you have an equation, can you multiply both sides by any number? Yes. The only exception would be 0, maybe. No, not really, because if two sides are equal, then 0 equals 0 is also satisfied. But division by 0 is problematic. But you can pretty much multiply both sides by something. If you have an inequality, that's different. But we have an equation, an equality, so we can multiply both sides by ln 5. Let's do it, and then, then I'll explain why this is helpful. Now, when, when we multiply by ln 5, we're basically getting the following. x ln 5 times e to the power x ln 5 equals 50 ln 5. Now, how is this helpful? We got the same thing here and here. So we're going to look at a special pattern and a very special function, which is called Lambert's W function. Okay? Don't worry, we're going to look at this problem from different angles. So this is not going to be the only focus, but I just want to introduce this to people who are not familiar with that. So Lambert's W function is basically, uh, can be expressed with a big, huge W. And then if we input t to the t, output is supposed to be t. In other words, it's the inverse of t e to the t as a function of t. So we don't really have an explicit expression for it, unfortunately. But it's also called the product log. So if you're going to enter this in Wolfram Alpha, you can basically write product log with no space. And then parentheses, you can use a number like 0 or 1 or any other branch. And then comma, whatever the value you're trying to W. Okay? So let's go ahead and apply it on both sides. So we're going to have W of, oops, W of x ln 5 times e to the x ln 5 equals w of 50 ln 5. Just trying to change the color here. Now, we applied Lambert's w function on both sides. And when it's applied on t e to the t right here, this should give us x ln 5. Because remember, that's our t, right? or coffee, whatever you like. But on the right hand side, we don't really have a straightforward answer. We have something like 50 ln 5, 50 times ln 5, but that's not in the form t e to the t, or c e to the c, c for a constant, because 50 ln 5 is a constant, right? So how can I put this into this format? Easy. You just have to manipulate it wisely, 
uh, very carefully. And uh, it can be done by experimenting with these numbers because you don't always get it right right away, right? So you kind of need to uh, try different things. For example, here's what we need to do. First of all, we need to get the same number. So before we get to CE to the C, we kind of need to get something like maybe K ln K. Make sense? Because once I get that, I can write this as ln K times E to the power ln K, which is K by the way. So this will be my T or C. But how do you get there from 50 ln 5 to K ln K? And that can be done by factoring the 50 because 5 is prime. So we can kind of do this. I can write the 50 as 5 times 10 ln 5. And then I can take one of these numbers and send them back as powers. And then this is going to be, for example, 10 ln 5 to the fifth. But these numbers are not equal. They're supposed to be equal. Look at this. K ln K means they're the same numbers. Or I can try 10 times 5 ln 5 and try to ba send back the 10. But again, it's not going to work. So 5 times 10 is not a good way to do it. Maybe we should try something else. How about 2 times 25? Great. Now, if you try to take the 2, it's going to work. But if you try to take the 25, notice that this gives us 2 ln 5 to the power 25. And who knows what it is? That's such a large number. I think it's going to be 3,125 squared. I'm guessing that's going to be even larger than uh, several million. Anyways, that's pretty large. These numbers are nowhere close. So we have to do the opposite. Send the 2 over there. So in other words, we have to take 50 ln 5 and then take this as 2 times 25 ln 5. Take the 2, send it here as a power so that we can now write it as 25 ln 5 squared, which is 25 ln 25. Awesome. Now 50 ln 5 can be written that way. And now I'm going to set it equal to the left-hand side, which is x ln 5. Make sense? That's where it comes from. So x ln 5 is equal to 25 ln 25. Awesome. Well, not so awesome because we still have to simplify it, but the rest is fairly easy. Now, you don't really have to worry about too much. Like, you don't really have to convert it to 2e to the t. Wait a minute. I just uh, turned this into that. So I have to still, uh, w I have to use w. Okay, let me make this right. So now we got this and this gave us 25 ln 25. Now we have the following. We have x ln 5 on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have w of 25 ln 25 which I'm going to write as w of ln 25 times e to the power ln 25 and then that's going to give us ln 25 because that's going to be our new t. And ln25 can be written as ln5 squared, which is 2 ln5. And finally, from here, x is going to be 2. Great. So x equals 2 with lots of difficulties, right? And I know some people are thinking, hey, why do you have to go through all these loopholes where you can just guess and check, right? Well, exactly. You can do that, but I just wanted to introduce this function and use it. Let me go ahead and show you something else. So suppose we have the following function, f of x equals x times 5 to the x. If you differentiate this function, you're going to get 5 to the x plus 5 to the x times ln 5 times x, or 5 to the x multiplied by 1 plus x ln 5. And then setting, equal, setting this equal to 0, we find the critical points which are going to come from here. x is just going to be negative 1 over ln 5. By using this critical point, I can make a table of values such as this, this is going to be my x, this is going to be my f prime, and this is going to be my f. And the critical value that I have is negative 1 over ln 5, where the derivative changes from negative to positive. Why is it positive here? You can kind of figure it out by looking at the function's behavior. But this just means that my function is supposed to be decreasing and then increasing, which makes a minimum at this point. What is that supposed to mean? I'm trying to make this uh, solution. I'm trying to come up with the solution, and I got x equals 2 as a solution. Is that the only solution? And if you put x equals 2 on this table, you're going to realize that on this interval from 2 to infinity or in the neighborhood of 2, our function is always going to be increasing. It's not going to change sign because there's no other critical point. 
Therefore, we're going to have a graph like this, which means this function will only be intersected at a single point, which means x equals 2 is the only solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.